Dealing with Intrusive Thoughts by p r a p a i s a n Visalo, narrated by u s a w a d i s i n t u s e n Meditation practice is to train ourselves to be in harmony with ourselves, or to be in harmony with the present moment. To be in harmony with the present moment has a broad meaning. It means that we have to be content with what we have, with what we are doing, and also with what we are at the present moment. To go deeper than that, it means to be content and accept the thoughts or emotions that we have at the present moment. To accept doesn't mean that you are lost or follow the thoughts, but it means to keep our mind normal. This is the only way to free our mind from all kinds of thoughts or emotions, whether they are positive or negative thoughts, pleasant or unpleasant emotions, agreeable or disagreeable feelings. Just observe them and learn to come to terms with them. People in general are likely to react to the thoughts or emotions that they have. To be precise, they are not reacting, but attach or clinging to the emotions or the thoughts that arise, even unpleasant feelings. It may sound strange, but we tend to cling to unpleasant feelings or emotions. You may have noticed that when we experience anger, we never try to let it go. We keep recalling the incident that causes us anger, and keep reminding ourselves about the behavior of that person that upsets us. We cling to that negative emotion or experience, and never try to let go of it. We may want to, but we never try. We just cling to it, grasping the anger. The anxiety, or whatever. Thus, we cannot sleep at night because we keep thinking about this and that, despite the fact that there are unpleasant feelings, emotions, events, or experiences. That is why I say, we cling to it. We do not accept it the way it is, but cling to it. That is what the Buddha called indulging in pain, or indulging in suffering. In the first sermon of the Buddha, he mentioned two extremes: indulging in pain and indulging in pleasure. The Buddha advised us to avoid these two extremes. To indulge in pain does n t mean that we torture ourselves as the Buddha did when he tried to attain enlightenment through ascetic behavior. But we indulge in another kind of pain, that is mental pain. When anger arises, we are lost in anger. When anxiety arises, we are caught up in anxiety. We grasp it, grasping anger, clinging to anxiety. This is indulging in pain. We have already fallen into the extremes that the Buddha suggested we avoid. The same applies to indulging in pleasure. Normally, people think that to indulge in pleasure means indulging in sensual pleasure. Like a playboy loves to have new spouses, or enjoy going to the casinos, theaters, nightclubs, etc. But the truth is, when pleasant feelings arise in your mind, you tend to cling to them and join them. We are always caught up in agreeable emotions and feel content with them. This is indulging in pleasure, another extreme that the Buddha instructed us to avoid. You may have realized 
that you have already indulged in those extremes during your practice. That is not the middle way that the Buddha suggested. The middle way, in this sense, means not losing yourself in either painful or pleasant experience, be it calmness, happiness, suffering, anger, or anxiety. Do not become lost in those feelings or emotions. Just accept them as they are. When pleasant feelings or good thoughts arise in your mind, you tend to follow it, don't you? When you encounter unpleasant feelings, you want to suppress them, don't you? But that is not an act of acceptance. To accept means to observe, to see, to recognize, and to let go of it. This is the only way to be free from all kinds of feelings or thoughts. I would like to urge you to learn how to turn with all kinds of thoughts and emotions that arise. You will find that once you accept them, once you observe them, they will gradually pass away. This is the best way to let go of them. To liberate ourselves from them and get rid of them, not to stop them, but to observe them, and they will gradually be dissolved. This is the middle way that the Buddha suggests: to indulge neither in pain nor in pleasure, not only in the physical or sensual aspects, but also in the more delicate mental aspects. หลวงพ่อ my teacher said to see but not to identify with it. If you identify with it, you have already indulged in both pleasure and pain. Just see it as it is, as it really is. Do not be overjoyed or upset by pleasant or unpleasant feelings. This will keep our mind stable. That is what we call accepting the way we are in the present moment, and being in harmony with the present moment. Thoughts always trick you or make a fool of you. They need your attention, the same as a child always asks for his mother's attention. They are very clever, and have many tricks to fool you. To draw your attention, persuading you, the thought says, "Come, come, talk with me. Come, interact with me. Come, join me." In the beginning, you may think that you know their tricks, but their tricks are endless. When I practiced, I said to the thoughts, "No, I will not interact with you." Whatever thoughts arise, I will turn my back on you. Yet they have many new tricks to make a fool of me. Sometimes they ask, "Hey, why don't we think about Dhamma? Investigating Dhamma is good, isn't it?" So I jump into the thoughts and later realize, "Oh, I fell into your trap again." That's all right. You should try to have strong will. Sometimes you have very beautiful and excellent ideas. You may think about the glorious past, a beautiful moment in the past, or somebody whom you like to talk with. The thoughts will try to persuade you to interact with them. But you should have strong determination to resist that temptation. In the beginning, it may be difficult, but with the support from mindfulness and the strength of mindfulness, you will feel it increasingly easier to ignore the call or temptation of the thoughts. Later, you will find that it becomes your natural response. Because after a period of consistent practice, 
the temptations of the thoughts become less powerful. Why do they become less powerful? Because the thoughts become shorter and shorter. In the beginning, the thoughts are long, like a train of thoughts. Gradually, the thoughts become shorter and shorter. The shorter a thought is, the less powerful it is. That is why you will find it increasingly easier to turn your back on them and accept them the way they are. Once a thought arises, do not bother with it. Just see it and say to yourself, "That's the way it is." Whatever the thoughts or feelings arise, be they good or bad, wholesome or unwholesome, just see them without being disturbed or annoyed by them. Yet in the beginning. You may feel upset with yourself because you never realized that bad thoughts or evil ideas could arise in you. But if you are mindful enough, you will accept it. That's the way it is. Gradually, the equanimity arises. So I suggest you maintain the attitude of acceptance. Whatever ideas, whatever thoughts, whatever emotions occur in your mind, just try to keep the normal and have no preferences, like or dislike, appreciation or aversion. Try to avoid these two extremes. Just accept them the way they are. This is the second mantra. I would like to present to you. That's the way it is. The bad thoughts that arise, the evil ideas that arise, are beyond our control. So just accept them as natural, as normal. That's the way it is. The ordinary mind tends to be judgmental. It always judges. This is good. This is bad. This idea is good. That idea is bad. I like this idea. I do not like that idea. I am content with these emotions. I'm not content with those emotions. With a discriminating mind, you will never experience peacefulness. Your mind will go up and down, up and down, because of such preferences or such judgmental mind. The way to attain peace is to develop the indiscriminative mind, have no preferences or judgment, and see everything as it really is. Accept it as the natural process that occurs to your mind. They are just visitors, coming and going. No matter how good or bad the idea is, any kind of idea. Just let it come and go, appear and disappear. Do not be bothered with it. Just see it, take note of it, and then come back, returning your attention to the body's movement. In brief, try to resist the temptations of the thoughts. They need your attention because. That's the only way they can sustain themselves. Unless you give them your attention, they cannot survive. They can exist only with your support. If you do not pay attention to them, they will just pass away. This is the best way to handle the emotions. Do not suppress them. Do not try to stop thinking, nor force your mind to drop the thoughts. Just say to yourself, "When the thoughts arise, that's the way it is."